know we're at that point in the project where uh, everything is playable, it's all together. Uh, we've, uh, we've got, uh, done a lot of tuning uh, and we're, we're fixing bugs every which way. It's amazing, the, the team is, uh, is really killing it back in Austin right now. Uh, and doing a lot of play testing. The most important thing we're probably doing right now is, is uh, what, what I, I, call, I always call blind testing, where you bring in people to play the game uh, and you see where they're having trouble, where they're not, where they're, where they're getting things, uh, and then you sort of evaluate and decide what you're going to address. So in heavy duty tuning, uh, preparing for our holiday release. I mean, we're literally talking, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of bugs and tuning issues fixed every week. It's just the game is getting even better every day. One of the big challenges for the game is uh, how do we train players, you know, not just to run and jump, right? Every game you have to teach people how to run and jump again, which is kind of annoying, but, but part of what makes games, uh, you know, unique. You have, to, you, you have different controls, different abilities every time. Uh, and, but we not only have to teach players all of that basic stuff that every game has to teach players, but also we have to tell them, hey, by the way, you don't have to do everything in this game. There's some stuff you can do if you want to, but that's going to have some consequences, and you can not do it if you don't want to deal with those consequences. And on top of that, we have to teach them not only is there optional content, but you can interact with the world in a variety of ways. You can, you can draw and erase. That is the thing. I mean, you've all heard me talk about this enough times. You're probably, you know, thinking, oh my God, not again. But, you know, you can draw and erase in this game. And that's a new idea. It may not be new to you guys, but when we get, you know, normal people playing the game, and even gamers, um, it's not something that, that you get right away. And so our, the, the first three levels in the game, which we're showing here uh, at, at uh, PAX, are our tutorial levels. So they feel a little different than the stuff we've shown before. You know, they're, uh, they're very much about teaching the player how to do the things that make the game special and uh, teach them all the things that are special about the game, or at least some of them. Yeah, okay, so Mickey has been dragged into this world by the Phantom Blot. Uh, a lot of people have asked me uh, uh, previously, uh, why is Mickey drippy? If you notice, he's got He's got this sort of drippiness going on. Um, and now I can finally say why. I mean, in, in, the, in the introduction to the, the game, uh, Mickey and the blot actually merge. There's a point where the blot literally swallows Mickey up. And they basically become one thing. And it's only because Mickey is, is, the, is the hero. He's got the strength of will and the strength of character to say, I will not be like the blot. But he can't quite contain that sort of inky, you know, drippiness that, that characterizes the blot. So there's, there's a, an interesting connection that I, I still don't want to say too much about, but there, there's an interesting connection uh, between Mickey and the blot. You can sort of see hints of it in, uh, in the intro sequence, but that's why Mickey is drippy. Um, again, so here we're, we're basically telling the player, uh, first of all, he's got a spirit guide, this character, uh, uh, Gus, the gremlin, who I've talked about before, but now you start to see his role in the game. Uh, in the, in the, intro, in the uh, tutorial stuff, it's pretty straightforward, very simple. Uh, he is your teacher. Uh, and as the time goes on, he becomes uh, a source of information. And, and eventually, he actually even becomes uh, your conscience. So telling you the, the impact of the things you're doing. Uh, really important character in the game. And he's always just off screen, which I always think is kind of Disney magical, you know? I'll always be there with you, Mickey, just off screen. Um, so now we've taught the player how to run, how to jump, uh, how, to, how to use the spin move, uh, which is one of the ways you interact with things in the world. Uh, you've taken care of a, uh, or you've started to take care of a machine, that, that's the machine that tried to suck your heart. Hearts are very important, you'll have to play the game to discover exactly why. And so a little bit of a challenge for players. Again, we don't want, it, we don't want a, a dry tutorial, so trying to keep the tension up, action all the time. Uh, okay, so now how do you jump? And by the way, I, I will say, I've watched a lot of people play this now. Someone who actually helped build this stuff is making it look somewhat easier than it actually is. Uh, so there will be some challenges for players in here. Anyway, you can go exploring down here, uh, check some things out, uh, you know, look at Oswald statues, Oh, well, there's, there's something, something really magical going on. You can spin, uh, tune things in the world to get, uh, to get uh, collectibles. 
You can spin the inert things, the non-tuned things, and break them to get, uh, to get stuff out of them. Um, <clears throat> but all this is optional. You don't have to go and do any of this. So this can be a very short, straightforward, I know how to do stuff, I've got a world to save, go save it sort of experience. Or you can go exploring and finding secret rooms and uh, collecting everything uh, to be collected here. What are the collectibles? for the player in the game? Uh, well, there are a variety of things. Uh, there are some that are kind of bragging rights, and um, you know we're going to track how many of the things, like the pins, are, are kind of bragging rights. They're a measure of your success in a variety of ways. Actually, I'm going to hold off. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Let's, we'll just watch this. Okay, so now we give you a little area where you've, you've learned to use you know, the power of paint, at least you've been told how to do it and what it can do. And then we put you in a little corridor that has all sorts of painted and sketchy areas so you can play uh, and figure out how this stuff actually works. We can now paint in everything. And again, you, what you have to remember is it's, it's, it seems like small stuff, but if, if Pat went and, and painted everything, or well, if you erase that, it becomes unusable. You know, there might be some benefit to doing that, and there is but you, you gain something which will kind of keep a little quiet uh, for now. But if you paint it back in, the world is actually recognizing that too. Uh, and it becomes usable so you can get different stuff out of it. You can get, like he just got paint. You were asking what are the collectibles. You can get uh, paint and thinner, uh, uh, you know, uh, ammo basically. Um, you can get tickets. Uh, which are our economy. There are, there are shops in, in the hub maps, which we haven't shown off yet, I admit, but uh, there, are, there are hub maps where you, which you'll visit many times during the game, and you can buy things with tickets. Are they e-tickets? Uh, there are e-tickets in the game, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there are obviously references to the old, the old tickets from the parks, for sure. Just e-tickets, you don't have to call them? Uh, we actually have a variety of them, just, nice. just like the parks did. Uh, and they're different denominations, and you know, we'll, you know, you will, we'll tell you how much you collected over the course of the yeah. game and everything. So they're both bragging rights uh, and how many tickets you collect and also the ability to buy things uh, later in the game, which you can even, I, I think I've said this, I'm pretty sure I've said this already, but uh, you can buy your way past quests. If something is too tough for you, you can, I mean, like, if you give somebody a ticket, it's like, oh, I've got to let you buy, Arr, you know. So if something is too tough, occasionally you can, you can actually get around something using tickets. Um, so... Uh, uh, there are also uh, pins. Pins are, are for bragging rights more than anything else. Uh, collectibles like paint and thinner are obvious. Tickets are, um, uh, are for, for buying things. Yeah, okay. So we also we, we, we show you about uh, the sketchy effect. Something that's tuned that's been erased has this, see how it pulses? So what we want is to reward observation. So players who are observant will notice that sort of thing. And later in the game, there are, there are things that you, where we don't force you to do it because we're not doing a tutorial, but uh, here we just sort of force you to do this. You have to notice that. You have to paint it in to open the door. So gears can be uh, sketchy. Gears can be painted. Gears control things. Uh, there you go. Uh, and again, the game is noticing that he's erasing stuff uh, behind the scenes, and that will have ramifications for Mickey down the line. So even simple things like making the choice to leave this place sort of decrepit and unpainted are important. <clears throat> okay, so now, well, <laughs> and Gus is talking again. Okay, so now we have different things. Now we show that Tune can actually, well, you restored the world, but the door frame is actually preventing that door from opening in this case. So again, we kind of force you to do it here. Later in the game, this becomes more optional. Um, 
So tune stuff can support inert stuff. So you, to get past those, those stones there, he had to erase the floor out from under something, and then the inert stuff that's sitting on the, the tune floor falls through. Uh, and then you can paint it back in. So again, we're trying to teach the player something that's not intuitive, that's new to gaming, uh, as quickly as possible. But mostly what we're te teaching here is, how do you fight stuff? And, and here the thing is, uh, in most cases, you can ignore combat. You don't have to fight most of the time. Uh, you can also use paint to turn enemies into friends. So if you choose to, you know, you don't want to be that, that sort of mischievous, uh, you know, uh, sort of thinner guy. You can turn them into friends and they'll help you out. So you can just go about your business. Um, or you can erase them. <laughs> Take your pick. And again, you get different rewards for that. You get assistance for friending in this case. You can get some tickets for erasing them. So do you want resources or do you want help? They're the, those kind of questions, so I call it local consequence, local choice and consequence. You can kind of decide what you want, what kind of game you want, what kind of uh, rewards you want to get. Uh, but there are plenty of things in here. There are secret areas you can reach, uh, especially in the 2D levels, that require some real skill. Not taking damage from a big fall, that can obviously have advantages if you're good enough to do it. But uh, he is. A lot of players uh, will have to work up to that. So the other thing, I mean, the Sears, I don't know if you noticed, that's, that's one of the, the, the Blot's uh, smaller little minions. And he can also... Uh, if you don't take care of him one way or another quickly enough, he can attract his pals. Other like that right there means he is calling more, more enemies in. So if you, I mean, if you enjoy combat and you want to collect a bunch of tickets by thinning stuff out, you might even want to let them attract other people. Uh, if you don't, you might want to friend them or erase them pretty quick. And okay, so well, you, we've already shown the player that uh, spinning gears uses them. In this case. Spinning it is dropping a gremlin cage with a gremlin in it and a catapult. So here is our first, like this is a, a pretty simple choice. Uh, you can get a treasure or you can get help a gremlin. Which one do you want to do? Uh, you've already done a bunch of uh, chest breaking, so you kind of know what's in, in chests. But do you want to help the gremlins or not? Uh, you know, what, what do you want them to do? Help that All right, help the grandma. It's a little less funny, but it pays off in the end. So you help the grandma, but you cannot get that chest now. So again, all we're trying to do here is show the player choices have consequences. Just you know, think before you act. Um, so now not only are you know you're, the gremlins like you a little better, uh, you've helped out, which the game is sort of sort of storing in, in, in the background, and you got a pin. So the player who took the treasure there would get something else. I'm not going to even tell you what it is, and um, wouldn't have that pin. So at the end of the game, this guy's going to have a pin that you know other players won't have. So a little bragging rights sort of thing. Uh, well. Okay, so one of the, the, the early things that, uh, that I realized and the team realized was that uh, the ability to, to erase uh, anything tune was pretty powerful. And if, if our bosses were just tune creatures, you know, maybe they're huge and so they have a lot of hit points, but then you get into what we call you know, chopping trees. It's no fun to just stand there and go, you know, thin, 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 thin. You know, it's no fun at all. So uh, early on we realized that we needed um, uh, another kind of thing that was immune to your core abilities. Uh, and we already had the idea of inert materials that you couldn't just erase. And so there are uh, enemies uh, called beetle works that, are, that have both inert and tuned parts. So you have to combine your ability to, to affect things physically and your ability to erase them. Okay. And the bosses are largely the same. And also, the, the bosses are, I mean, bosses are kind of puzzly things, right? So there are things that you have to do. You have to, you know, thin out certain parts of them in certain sequences so you can reveal inert parts that you can then interact with. So there are ways to make the bosses plenty challenging. Yeah. So now stop right there. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so I, I mentioned the Guardians. Um, the Guardians do several things for you. One is, uh, like I said, they're, they're kind of one hit, instant, you know, whatever's, you know, eraser or, or friend. Uh, they also uh, will show you kind of the way to go. So if you're ever kind of stuck, if you look for uh, Guardians, that's a good clue that that's a place you want to go. But on top of that, uh, you also have the ability to use them actively, uh, both as uh, you know, sort of active things where you can send a guardian or several guardians out to do your bidding for you. Or you, if you're really stuck, you can actually ask for help. You can, it's, it's kind of cool, you can raise your hand like you're in class and say, I need help. And, and a guardian will go off and show you something related to the goal, the, the quests that you have active right now. So they're, they're kind of a hint system. So you have completed a quest. We have a quest, we have a quest map where you can track your quest status and all, that, all the stuff you would expect. Um, but uh, the way you travel is you jump into Mickey Mouse cartoons. Uh, this one is inspired by Mickey and the Beanstalk. Um, with, and, and if you've seen the cartoon, uh, you'll notice a lot of uh, uh, obvious references uh, to it. And again, it, you know, one of the things I, I, I really hope happens is that uh, players, uh, and certainly Disney fans, play the where did that come from game. <laughs> you know, there's so much in the game that's inspired by, by real Disney stuff. And I really, I, I'm hoping we can drive people back to the actual cartoons just to remind them how, how wonderful these things really were. Um, the, the end game will change based very specifically on what you do individually, okay? Every, uh, that's an overstatement, but there are a lot of ways the end game can turn out. And so uh, we've identified the major things in the game and the way those major things get closed off uh, and, and presented to you, the player, will change and, and it is unique to every player. It's not like uh, like Deus Ex where it's like you get to a choice point and you just pick one of three endings that you want to see. It's, it really is dynamic and uh, based on how you played from start to finish.